What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Century, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. And it's game day, and my voice is rested. I feel a little bit better being back. Uh, the Bulls play the Boston Celtics tonight as they get ready to head into one of their most difficult stretches of the season. The next nine games for the Chicago Bulls are all going to have their tests and challenges. This one, can they start off uh, that run doing pretty well against Boston? We'll talk about all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans. So even though we already have a victory over the Boston Celtics, um, as we know, this is not a team. That, and the Bulls in general are a team that can't overlook anybody. Our, up, our play has been so up and down and sometimes uh, we do always go through a big scoring drought. We give up uh, a lot of threes except on the corner. We defend the corner three pretty well. Um, but with a team that, that can score and defend like the Boston Celtics, you can never overlook them. And again, you don't want to overlook them anyway just because of where they sit right now in the standings. One of the better teams um, in, in the uh, – league overall right now and has been playing pretty consistently overall yes we do have a victory against them and shout out to us for doing so but <laughs> as of right now the boston celtics six fifth um on the eastern conference standings which the standings don't mean a lot right now this early in the season but even though the bulls have more wins than them, we play less games than them we can move ahead of them uh with a win tonight um, and so this game that I want to see from the Chicago Bulls on ESPN, so we guys we know how it can go when it's nationally televised for us and the concern that it, that sits there. I want to see this Bulls team come out and get four quarters of solid basketball. We've gotten everything from Zach Levine uh, looking amazing and taking over quarters, DeMar taking over quarter, corners as well, Vooch just dominating um, in certain games and using his size and that rebounding. We've seen Patrick Williams chip in good, good games, and we've seen Ayo Sumu chip in Big games on both sides of the ball. We need to start seeing it all come together. Now, does that mean that Zach, DeMar, and Vooch are always going to be able to all go over 20 every single night? No, and you shouldn't need to because now it seems like the younger players in this starting lineup and Io DeSumo and Patrick Williams are both, A, they're both on upticks. Io is more than well, uh, ready and willing to take over a more of a, of a scoring load at times during games, showing his ability to really put the ball on the floor, get to the lane, and not hesitating taking the big shots as well. And then you got Patrick Williams, who's been on a steady um, increase and just playing better game over game for about the last five games in a row. We've gotten good P-Will, active P-Will on both sides of the ball, aggressive P-Will. If this starting lineup can put that together, all just kind of find a way to balance it and all go into one, you're looking at a team that's going to play much better, that's going to contend much better, that's not going to give up the big leads, that's going to be able to keep up that, that intensity and, and activity even in the starting lineup. So far, the story with the Bulls season, and one of the more concerning things is that starting lineup has not been able to keep um, up that intensity that the bench comes in with. Now, after the bench kind of sets the tone, the starters usually maintain that as well. Sometimes they drop off a little bit slightly again, but we need to see that from the starting unit. When you bet on continuity, when the biggest bet that you made outside of bringing in uh, Drogic and Drummond was continuity you want to see the benefits of that continuity come in that starting lineup this is a group that, yeah hasn't played a lot of games together when you look at the injuries to Zach um, injuries to, to Patrick Williams Io being in and out of the starting lineup last season because he wasn't projected to be a starter the continuity of this starting lineup still does have some room to grow still does have some some building to do but we need to start seeing that come in heading into the 10th game of the season this is where you start trying to see the things that are going to be trends and trends and trends Usually, you got about to the first 20 games of the season before you really want to start writing home what teams are, especially if those teams have been dealing with injury. We are going to be missing Andre Drummond in this one also, so be on the lookout for that. But overall, we need to see impact from this team on both sides of the ball. We need to see the steadiness from on both sides of the ball. It's great having huge quarters from the Chicago Bulls team. It's great seeing uh, Zach Levine be able to take, on, take over a fourth quarter. We're going to need that at times during the season. But what I want to see become more of the story for the Chicago Bulls is just the consistent play. Never, not going too far down, not going too far up, just playing consistently so far. As of right now, the Chicago Bulls offense ranks 27th, I mean, 22nd in the NBA. At one point, we were as high as 15th. The Boston Celtics uh, offense ranks seventh in the NBA coming into this game. This is not a game that you want to overlook. You want to have or uh, allow yourself to go through huge scoring droughts. Yes, there are going to be teams that go goals on runs. That's 
That's all, that's going to happen in every game. Every game's going to have its own story. There are going to be teams that goes on that go on runs against us. But at the end of the day, we need to see this Bulls team be able to keep up the pressure scoring. We are the sixth ranked defense in the league. So even though our offense is ranked in the twenties, we have one of the top defenses so far by point differential in the NBA this season. The Boston Celtics currently rank 18th. So again, this is a game in which the Bulls can step up that defensive intensity. It's going to be a bit harder. We do not have drum in this game. This is going to be a game where Vooch um, and Derrick Jones Jr., who's, who's primarily picking up those backup center minutes, are going to have to play with a- activity and defend and rebound the ball very well. Vooch has done pretty good with Drummond being out. Did have a bad game last game, but overall, he's still been getting those double-digit rebounds. Hasn't been scoring as, as well lately. This is a game where we want to see Vooch get back on track scoring-wise because he can. We know outside of Al Horford, when Al Horford is not on the court, Vooch is going to have the size advantage against anybody else in that center position for the Chicago Bulls. And we need to see this team really, like I said, the next nine games are tough. I talked about on yesterday's episode how the next nine games are going to be key important for Patrick Williams to really show where he is in his development and growth. Growth, But it's going to be even more so that for the team overall as we face a lot of teams that are slated to be playoff teams and have solid mass- matchup advantages over us. We want to see this team play better. Patrick Williams needs to prove that this recent play, this recent uptick from him, isn't just a flash in the pan. This is going to be something consistent from P. Will. And, of course, he's going to have his bad games. He's going to have his off games, whether they be defensively or offensively. We need to see it come together for this team. Outside of that, wait, we expect uh, Zach and DeMar to be Zach and DeMar, and I know that kind of goes understated at this point, but it is. You, you know what to expect from these players. Zach playing in his first back-to-back says he feels great. Let's see if Zach can, you know, respond after a day of rest and look a little bit more energetic. I know down in the stretch of that last game, he did not look good. Overall in the game, didn't have the output that we're, that we're used to. A lot of his shots were falling short. That's a sign of bad legs. Hopefully now with some rest, you know, building up that resiliency after a back-to-back, we see a better Zach Levine throughout this game. DeMar as well. Coming off a game where DeMar looked pretty pedestrian, right? And we don't expect that from DeMar DeRozan. But we know DeMar's style of game, his the way that he goes about his business, he's going to get back on track sooner rather than later. But we want to see a big game from him as well. The bench is going to be telling in this matchup. If the Chicago Bulls bench not only keeps the intensity or sets the tone as they have been doing so far defensively, but also how do they get out in transition? Last game getting a great game from Javante Green and Goran Dragic and just the energy that they both provided and just the coming in and just doing work, doing their business, going about their business in a good way. This Chicago Bulls bench has been looking great, even without Andre Drummond, who's been such a big part to our success early in the season. We're going to be without him this game as well. We'll see what's going on with Kobe White or not in this game too, but this is a game that we want to see this this Bulls team step the hell up and play really good basketball for us. Now, with that being said, before we go into the weekend, I do want to talk. There's been a lot of talk about now that we've gotten to see the Bulls for after after the end of today's game, it'll be 10 games we've gotten to see the Bulls. What do we need to see? A lot of Bulls fans are wondering what's going on with this Tony Bradley situation. Do the Bulls go ahead and cut, wave Tony Bradley to bring in a veteran for at that minimum um, spot? I think that they may wait to the buyout market, but I want to talk about some of the free agents that I would be interested to see this Bulls team go after. One of the ones I've already talked about heavily is Carmelo Anthony. I look at what Carmelo could bring to the fore, bringing more of a legitimate four size, the ability to stretch the ball out some as well. His ability to shoot the three, a player that averaged 13 points off the bench last season, and just a player that I'm really surprised has not found a role as of yet, looking at how he's played his last few NBA seasons. Carmelo Anthony is at the top of many Bulls fans' list, I, I do think, um, because of those things. Also, when Patrick Williams' shot isn't falling, Patrick Williams isn't uh, playing pretty well, or Javante isn't, you can bring in a, a player like Car- Carmelo, who is a veteran, can fit in really seamlessly with almost any team in any scheme, because he does. he is a solid passer. Um, a more willing passer now later in his career. Still not the best defender, so we are going to lose something defensively there for sure. Um, But at the end of the day, like what Carmelo could bring scoring-wise, still being a pretty solid player out in isolation at times. I don't know if he gets a lot of isolation here on this Bulls team, but he is somebody that I do think the Bulls might want to take a look at as we continue. Like, again, let me preface this. I do not expect or think that the Chicago Bulls are going to be making moves anytime soon. I really do think they are really going to use the most time possible to survey this team to really take a look at, okay, this is what we need to add to gear up for a playoff run. But Carmelo is definitely on the list of players that I would be interested in the Bulls uh, uh, looking into. The next one up is Dwight Howard. While I do think us having Andre Drummond and when Andre Drummond's fully healthy, it doesn't really leave much open for Dwight Howard. But I won't lie. There's been something to be said with now that Andre Drummond 
has gone down. He will miss his third game in a row tonight um, uh, against the Boston Celtics. Having a little bit more size that you can go to when when he, when Drummond's banged up or Vooch is banged up or something like that, there is something to be said with that. I'm not the biggest fan of the Andre Dr- of, of uh, Dwight Howard coming to this team because I do think we have what we need in Andre Drummond as a backup four, and you really don't want to play Dwight with a, as a four at all. You want to, you know, we have what we need. I should say at the backup five with Vooch and Drummond, we have that that situation locked in. And I don't really see Dwight as a player that can play multiple positions. At this point, he's kind of just a center, in my opinion. Whereas with Carmelo Anthony aspect of it, you can see Carmelo playing either that four and some three at times if we were to need it. Now, this next player is a player that I haven't seen a lot of Bulls fans bring up, and that's Eric Paschal, who actually played with the Utah Jazz. Now, this is a player who, in his rookie season, his initial, his first season with the Golden State Warriors, averaged 14 uh, points per game. Now, that was when the Golden State Warriors weren't. They were kind of still figuring the stuff out after injury. But in that season, his rookie season, he started, uh, he played in 60 games, started 26 of those games. He averaged 27 minutes per game and shot the ball at a 50% clip basically from the field and almost 30% from three for 14 points per game. He also chipped in four rebounds and 2.3 assists. Now, it's been declining since then. So you're really looking at three years ago, him really being that type of player that were able to do that. But his role has been, his role has been very minimalized since that time. Over the course of the time in averaging 27 minutes in his rookie season, he's only gone on to average 17 and 12 minutes in the seasons after that, one in uh, Golden State and one in Utah. He didn't only play 58 games last season for, for Utah, but I'm looking at him as a player that's solid on both sides of the ball, for one, that can play either the three or the four. Yes, it would still be some small ball four because he's only 6'6", but he has that wingspan that we know um, AK likes and an over seven foot wingspan. So this is a player, again, as I don't think the Bulls are going to be looking to break the bank, and if if the Bulls were to go ahead and cut Tony Bradley, sign Eric Paschal, and then, you know, let's say somebody else does come available at the buyout, they're more likely to want. You can cut Eric Paschal as well because he's not going to uh, garner a lot, but his size, his strength, his ability to guard both forward positions, um, being a 37 three-point sh- uh, shooting percentage over his career, we know that corner three is going to be open for anyone who plays the four here in this offense. Again, not somebody that I would necessarily look away from. Um, he brings a lot of that same skill set that like a uh, Justin Lewis, uh, uh, EJ Liddell, that all Bulls fans, me included, would have liked to see the Bulls kind of go after to fill a position similar to this. I think that he's a player that the Bulls should look out for. Let me know what you guys think on that one down below. Or any other free agents you think the Bulls should or could look at if they do decide to open up a roster spot by waving Tony Bradley. Let me know all that down below. Make sure you're following the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, BullsCentralPod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text and a voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We're the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. And see Red tonight's game day. I'll see you guys later. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.